My focus lately as a developer has been building websites and web apps, and the main tool I use to get that done, VS Code. It is the most popular code editor among developers, and I know what you're thinking, but Forrest, Vim, Vim is vastly superior to all of these crappy code editors. Sure, Vim is an option, but aside from just trying to be cool, we know that nobody uses Vim within a professional development environment. All right, all right, I can already see y'all now. No, Vim is the best, everybody uses it. <laughs> Vim is good. Well, NeoVim is good. Vim, they've made a few questionable decisions lately. But we're here to talk about VS Code. I've been using it for about four or five years as a professional software engineer, as well as on my own hobby projects, all front end work and Node.js, okay, I'll give you that. But I use various other IDEs for other types of development like Java and C++. But I wanna show you my VS Code setup, how I use it, my preferred extensions, my current theme, and my favorite, although oftentimes overlooked, settings within VS Code that I use for web development. If you watched this video, you'll know that I use WSL2 to run VS Code. And I could just come down here and type in Ubuntu and then open up Ubuntu on Windows and then type in code and go from there. But for some reason, I always just open up Windows Terminal, open up Ubuntu like this, and then I run VS Code from here. Oh wait, it turns out if I open it in just regular VS Code, it opens up as remote. I swear just like a month or two ago, it didn't do that. The difference, opening remote and then WSL Ubuntu. Although the real difference here is um, forward slashes instead of backslashes, because backslashes are crap. I wanna start with what you see, and what you see is the theme, the icons, the lack of fear of code, because bleh. And starting with the fact that I use Bash. I use Bash Shell, default, good to go. My theme is actually called Andromeda. Now, it is very bright and poppy, and it may be confusing you a little bit because I, when making the terminal website, exclaimed how much I enjoyed these like muted pastel-like colors. And I do really enjoy this. And I tried similar color schemes for coding, but I just didn't like it. What I like when coding are poppy, contrasting colors, like you see here. For a while there, I did rock with shades of purple. As you can see, it's a pretty cool looking theme. It's obviously purple themed and it's contrasting and things of that nature. But long term, I just couldn't do it. It just wasn't me. So Andromeda was the way to go. And also the icons. So the icons over here are not the default VS Code icons. This is what the stock icons look like. As you can see, you just have this for CSS, kind of a more muted JS, and then you have a muted git ignore, some brackets here, yada yada. And here are a couple other ones. However, by enabling VS Code icons, you can see just how they change. We have the HTML5 logo for HTML. We have a robot logo for robots. We have a uh, CSS3, a little bit more poppy JS, and then of course the NPM and get ignore icons down here. So much better. Just by installing one extension, you can have your file icons look way better. And then of course the lack of Fura code. I just don't like how you combine two characters for an arrow function into a single arrow. I don't like it. I don't like how you make three equal signs, just three long lines, or two equal signs, to two long lines. The only thing that I do like, and I will admit this, are the greater than or equal to right here. But it's not that big of a difference. So that's why I don't go with Firico. Now the settings. So I'm going with settings first before extensions because I feel like it makes more sense for you to see what VS Code can do by default and then adjust it from there before seeing what extensions can basically do the same thing. That is not to be confused with some extensions doing the job better than some of these default settings within VS Code. We'll get to that when we get to extensions. So what do I have? Oh, to stick with the current theme, I guess we can go to font size, I set it 16, and then the zoom level down here adjusts as I need it to, especially when I'm recording. So zoom level, control minus, control plus changes everything. Whereas if you change the font size, it changes only the font size. However, I also have mouse wheel zoom set to true, which I don't know why it doesn't change the value, but control scroll changes the actual font size here without changing everything else like this. And a couple default settings that will not appear in your JSON file, I assume because they are default, you didn't change them whatsoever, is having mini map enabled. The only reason I want to mention this because I know a lot of people who don't or who'd like to disable their minimap, which this is your minimap right here, but you need to have it enabled. Why? 
because it's not in your way like some people claim. I mean, come on. But also, it is the easiest way to scroll to an exact code block that you want. Like, it's so easy. You can just whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, pretty nice. A couple other things I have going on in the JSON file would be CSS editor.suggest insert mode replace. It changes IntelliSense just ever so slightly because normally when you choose a hint and you hit tab or enter to select it, it only replaces part of the code. This little setting right here replaces all of the code. It's a little hard to describe, but very useful. And then I also have code actions on save. Source fix all true so my linters can do their thing when I save and then source sort imports equal true. Not to be confused with organized imports. This is not the same thing because if we were rocking with organized imports, whenever I saved, my unused imports right here would be removed because organized imports removes unused imports. However, these aren't necessarily unused. I just happen to comment out the code that needs this. And I guess in theory, best practice would, you know, maybe I just come up here and comment this out as well, but I forget. And I don't want my imports to be removed every time I forget to comment them out. So sort import ignores the removal of unused imports. But if we were to mess with this a little bit, put react down here, put app.css down here, and then save, it puts everything in the proper order. We have our reacts up here, react icons is next, and then everything is in alphabetical order from there on out. Sort imports, true. And then in the same line, I have format on save set to true as well, which is a perfect segue into extensions because the main reason I have format on save set to true and basically nothing else is because of this extension right here, Prettier. It is exactly what it says right here, a code formatter with a lot of settings that I feel like VS Code should have in by default. For example, I pulled in all of this code when I was implementing a trading view widget into this little project I'm working on and this is kind of how it came to be. I did have to make a couple adjustments but most of this is directly copy and pasted from the widget code. But let me tell you, this formatting right here is ugly. I know it's small, I just want you to see most of it because when I come in here and hit Control S for save, it formats on save. Look how much better that looks. All of this gets properly formatted. There's changes that occur right here. And then as you can see, it's just neater. Turn like 80 lines of code into 50 lines of code and maintained readability. I mean, actually improved readability. And a few things you notice here is I am running tabs, not spaces. I am running single quotes instead of what it was before, double quotes. So when I save it, all of these are single quotes. And it also removed quotes from things that were unnecessary. So symbols was in quotes. All of these values were in quotes. But when I saved it, no quotes are needed. So it just removes what you don't need, changes it to your actual code formatting, and you can export a config file. So if you're working on a team, you all have the same config file, so there's no weird stuff going on every single time you commit to the same branch. And for extensions, you wanna make sure you have your linters. So we have ESLint, which is a linter for JavaScript and TypeScript, and basically just tells you bugs as you write your code, and then HTML hint. Why it's not called HTML lint, I don't think I'll ever know. But it's the same thing, but for HTML. And there's also style lint. I've had it installed in the past, but I and I and I configured everything, but I didn't really need it. The default linter, if you even want to call it that, within VS Code does what I need for CSS less as CSS, which is what style lint covers. So I didn't really need it. But that's not to say it's not good because it is very good for the people who use CSS all the time. I know a lot of people who use it. Auto rename tag is the next one. And this is one that should absolutely be included in VS Code by default. They even have a setting that they could fit it in perfectly. It doesn't make any sense. So if we come into a JS, JSX file, you know we have our HTML code right in here. Well, auto rename tag, I do have that enabled, right? This is a complete div right here. If I come in here and I wanna change what it is, it changes the closing tag as well. It changes both tags at once. Wow. But if I were to come in and disable this, I don't feel like reloading it. If I were to disable this, it would only change whatever tag you're on. Why would I ever want the opening tag and the closing tag to be different? It doesn't work. So why wouldn't you just change it automatically? Well, turns out it does do it automatically right here, linked editing, but this only works in HTML files. If you use React, if you use JS, JSX files and you have any HTML code in there or anywhere else, VS Code does not work. Why not when I come in here and I check this, it just does it 
for all tags, regardless of what file they're in. It's obviously able to be done right here with no problems, so why doesn't VS Code implement that? I'll never know. Tab9 is another tool that I use. It's Tab9 AI Autocomplete for JavaScript, Python, TypeScript, PHP, Go, Ruby, uh, Java, Ruby, and more. I used to use Kite. I tried out Tab9 after, and I like Tab9 better. And I choose this every single day of the week over GitHub Copilot because GitHub Copilot is proprietary software that is exploiting all open source code on GitHub as well as all of the code that you write using Copilot, having zero regard for privacy and using it to train their model and profit off it because there is actually no free version anymore. I think there was a beta version that was free. And yes, I do realize that I'm saying that about GitHub Copilot, which is obviously under the umbrella of GitHub, which is obviously under the umbrella of Microsoft ever since they bought it, which is akin to VS Code because VS Code is also under the umbrella that is Microsoft. And also WSL2 and, and, and Windows, and I really need to get off all this stuff. How about I just go full Arch Linux, NeoVim, and, and I do that for the next few months and I share with you my setup on those two things. Huh? I used to use Arch Linux. But basically just think of how you have that little bit of code completion when you're typing in any typical IDE like VS Code and then think of it better. And not only better, but forming to your code conventions as well as you able to have the privacy that GitHub Copilot does not provide you. That's what Tab9 does. And on occasion, Live server is another extension I use. I really only use this on front end only projects when I built the terminal website with vanilla HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I use live server for live reload because all I have to do is come down here, hit go live, and it runs the live server. Or in layman's terms, every single time I change a little bit of code, I can see it change upon save over in my window. However, when it comes to a project like this React project or React and Node projects, I always run nodemon and then I just type npm start and it whips everything up. It has live reload just the same. I don't know if there's any benefit over using one or the other, but this is just how I do it. So if I wanted to come in here and change the value to 13,000 right here, let's hit save, it changes 13,000. This is npm start, not live server. I don't even know if live server is compatible with it. That's how little I have looked into live server in regards to these projects because when you find something that works, does it really matter what else is out there that also works? I don't really care that much. And one more, the final extension that I'm gonna talk about, even though I haven't used it in quite some time, is document this. Now I always use, use duh with the past tense, is Doxygen. I would mainly use this for C++. I would use Java Docs for Java, obviously. And then I would use document this for JavaScript and TypeScript. You just come in here, control alt D twice, and then it has your params, it has your return, but obviously, it's not that in depth on this project, so I don't need it. But overall, I will say documentation is a good thing, just not always necessary. And that's really it for my VS Code setup. If you have any favorite extensions in VS Code or extensions that you think I could use, especially after seeing a little bit of my workflow, including settings, settings and extensions, leave them in the comment section. And themes, while I probably won't try yours out unless I really like it, I am interested, what is your favorite theme? What is your current theme? Let's say that. Leave it in the comment section. You can like this video if you liked it, sure, I guess. You know, I have to do all my due diligence as a YouTuber. But uh, more importantly is if you like the content that I make, subscribe. If you don't, don't subscribe. I don't want empty subscribers that aren't gonna be watching my videos. So if you like my videos, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified whenever I upload, which isn't that often, so it's not like I'm gonna blow up your notifications. And that's all I have. I do have a video coming next week. I just finished it up yesterday. I think you're gonna like it.